Hello, and welcome to the world of NDE 4.0. My name is Johannes Rana, and today is a great day, because today we will talk about the Industrial Internet of Things. We will talk about what is the IIoT, and how can we integrate NDE into the IIoT. Now, you might be coming more from civil engineering, and there's also something like a building IoT and an infrastructure IoT. And the concept of those is about the same as with the industrial Internet of Things. And if you see now my presentation, if you exchange some of the components out of it, you can actually use that for civil engineering. And in some future, I will also get do a video and get more into the specifics of how to apply the IOT also to other areas where NDE is done. Now let's get started with the IOT, the Industrial Internet of Things. But before we get there, let's go one step back. Let's get into Industry 3.0, into the third revolution. Third revolutions, we are getting digital, and we are becoming, getting into the age of automation. And talking about automation, yeah, once you start talking about automation, you automatically start talking about the automation stack. It's also called the automation pyramid or the five layer model. And what this model does, yeah, if you want to produce something in an industrial environment in the digital age, you're up there on the enterprise level, on your com company level, in the enterprise resource planning system, and you are planning what you want to produce. You cut all your POs with your customers, you have all your supplier relations, or your, your employee-based files, all of that is in the ERP file, uh, system. Then you're going one step down to your plant level, to the manufacturing execution system. Again, you're going one step down now to go to the shop floor level and to the supervisory control and data acquisition system SCADA. And finally, you're reaching your plant level, your control feed level. You're getting into the PLCs, the programmable logic controllers. And finally, to the field level, the in and output signals and also the human machine interfaces. And finally, you're getting to your production, producing something. Now, once you produce something, you are collecting data. That collect data is collected through your in and output, brought into the PLC, give it to the SCADA system. From the SCADA, it goes up to MES and ERP. So planning is going from bottom to uh, downwards, and your data feed is from bottom up. So what you need is you actually need Interfaces. You need interfaces between, between all of those layers. In my eyes, there are two major difficulties with that model. Number one, we have thousands and thousands of PLCs. We have thousands of machines producing something, measuring something, and so on. And all of those machines, all of those PLCs are produced by some OEM. And all of them have their own proprietary interface. So if we want to collect with our SCADA system all of the data from all of the PLCs, yeah, we have to implement thousands of different proprietary standards. So this is already the point where we see that we have to get more to a, yeah, open data models, data transparency, uh, information models, and so on. Now, the SCADA, the SCADA system, that is done mostly by an integrator or by the plant themselves. And now the idea is, okay, in the SCADA system, what we do, we have a lot of monitoring of what happens on, the, on our shop floor. Um, we have all of those trends and feedback and some monitors for it. But the real interesting point, point is to feed this information back into the MES system. Now, but 
Between the MES and the SCADA, MES is also done by some integrator, but mostly it's a different integrator. And mostly between the MES and the SCADA system, there is no digital connection. Mostly, this is where people are still using routing sheets, paper. You have some, you plan your production in your MES, you print it, you put it on the shop floor, and then it goes from, with the component from machine to machine to machine. So that's on the way downstream, but can you imagine how data you have collected in your SCADA systems going upstream? It's not happening. Or if it's happening, it's just done by, yeah, a sheet of paper, which is finally scanned, signed, and yeah, put into the MES system as a digital copy, but that's data you cannot use. But if you think about it, what you really want, you want to have your real time information out of your production, combine it with all the financial data you have in the ERP to really learn something, how to improve your production. So this is the two points where I think this autom idea of the automation stack, which is coming from industry 3.0, where this one has its issues, its challenges. Now, but if we think one step ahead of this, the automation stack. If we look into industry, now this is only production, but we do not start with producing something. Oh, just forgot ERP system. They are mostly done by, by the IT departments. But well, the point I was getting to, we are starting with engineering. We are starting with computer aided design. We're designing first the component we want to produce. Now there is a weak link between ERP, MES, and the computer-aided design system, but that's a pretty weak link. And we need that data to actually make really sense out of the data coming from our control level, our shop floor level. Also, we have our supply chain management. Now, again, we have a weak link to the ERP system. But what we really want to have is actually the data from all the suppliers. Same, we have product lifecycle management. We want to have the feedback from all the life of our components to have it as a feedback to the next generation of our production. We have some maintenance going on. We have perhaps some structural health monitoring already installed. Perhaps we have a digital twin and thread. And perhaps we have a cloud. Now, some people even put that cloud on top of our five layer model. I tend to see it separate, especially as for me, this automation stack is really coming from the third, uh, the third revolution and cloud is really a part for me of the fourth revolution. So now coming from the age of digitization, coming a little bit to digitalization, and now getting into the digital transformation. And a digital transformation is here, the industrial internet of things. So what we do to get to the IOT is we get rid of all those connection and we replace it by the IOT, by one place where we have all the data connections going in and out of this one industrial internet of things. Like we have it, with the internet we are using every day. Now what we need for this, yeah, for this we need, we need data transparency, we need semantic interoperability, we need all of those things we discussed already in the past. Okay, now, but where do we have NDE in this IAOT, you might ask? Yeah, that's a little bit why I'm I'm presenting this. If we think about, yeah, actually structural health monitoring, that is kind of NDE. Even if it's on a lot faster intervals, it's kind of continuous data. And it's not like some of the NDE methods a real view into the component like computer tomography or some ultrasonics. But it's in its kernel, it's NDE. And we have a lot of NDE going on in production. But again, this is a very weak link. Mostly it's paper-based. The inspectors are getting something which they have to inspect, 
So on a paper, they write a report, they sign it, scan it, and then it ends up somewhere in the ERP or MES system. But that's a scanned PDF. You cannot use that data for anything, for any real digital um, use of that data. The same is true for maintenance. In maintenance, we do a lot of NDE to make sure that, the, that we can still use those components. But again, this is a weak link. The same here for our supply chain management. Again, in the production at the suppliers, we do a lot of NDE. But again, we have this weak link. And so my point is that we get rid of all those weak links and that we directly integrate NDE into the IoT so that it becomes the valuable data source it is. For NDE really to become one of the key data sources for the IoT, so that everybody can use the data out of the NDE together with all the other data, and so that we can help industrial production, industrial maintenance, industrial design to make better products, to make better designs, longer lifetime, and so on, to help everybody also with sustainability. So, thank you for watching this video. If you have any comments, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down here in the comment section. Next time, I will get more into how can we really integrate NDE, or actually also other data sources, in the industrial Internet of Things. As usual, you will find more information in the description. If you need any consulting, how to actually establish the IoT or, the ND, or NDE into the IoT, please feel free to ask anytime. I hope you like this video. I hope you, you subscribe to this channel. I hope I will see you soon. I hope you give me a thumbs up for this video. So thank you for watching. See you soon. Thank you and bye.